Hey, this is Derek Murphy from creativity.com. Today I'm working on a sci-fi book cover. Uh, and it's got a space opera feel, but it's not exactly space opera. I've already made a mock-up, which isn't perfect. This is still really rough, um, but this is what I'm going to start with and then show you how I can take this and turn it into actually a really good cover. So a couple things to point out really quickly. This has two different authors, so I had to find a way to balance the two author names. That's always going to be a choice of whether you try to put them side by side or the same size um, or which one goes first or whatever. I just focus on whichever design looks best. Um, right now, this title, I suggested since it's a shorter word, it's only rock rain, um, we want the text to take up space and stand out. So I suggested this really bold sci-fi font, but I'm going to look for some others because I think we might be able to do better. Um, and the text doesn't really stand out against the background, so the background's going to need to be a lot lighter. Um, what I like going on, there's this dark element down here in the foreground. The background needs to be a lot lighter, but then also there's these really dark rocks coming down because the feature of this story is that um, you know, rocks are falling from the sky. There's a little bit of a head scientist or president female figure. Um, so I'm going to see if we can replace this figure down here with something that's more female or feminine. We may be able to. I'm going to show you what that looks like. There's also an AI element, which is kind of like potentially a robotic. It's hard to show AI or artificial intelligence unless you just show a robot. Um, so this is going to work pretty well. The other thing to point out is you want the most badass cover possible. So it's difficult to get all the details just right. If, if I'm thinking like, what is my character wearing? What is her facial expression or features? Um, this character is too small anyway. So even if I really got all the, the, the little details perfect, it might actually weaken the overall effect of the cover. So you want the strongest possible cover, not necessarily the one that you think matches all the details of your story. That said, you want to get you know the basic genre really tight and then you want to make it look professional. So with a book cover design, there's really only three elements you need to be focused on. Um, you need a central figure. In this case, we have the two. We have this giant robot and then the central figure, um, which I can you know clean up and make look a lot better. But I might show you how it would look with just one central figure because then she would take up a lot more space and there'd be more detail. But you want one central figure, you want one clean background. Um, sometimes you'll get lucky and find a really nice stock photo to use as a background. I've um, blended probably five or six different layers together to get this background and I'm going to clean that up a lot so it's going to look like one piece of art. And finally, you need the text or the fonts, and the fonts dictate the genre. So even in sci-fi, if you Google like best sci-fi fonts, um, there's going to be different fonts depending on what kind of sci-fi. If it's dystopian or sci-fantasy or space opera, they might all have different types of fonts that are going to appeal to the right audience of that target genre. Since I do already have this rough mock-up, um, the first thing I'm going to do is just start deleting down over here, I've got a whole bunch of layers that I'm not actually going to use because I was putting a bunch of stuff together for the mockups. So first, I just quickly deleted some extra stuff. Then I'm going to start replacing these. You can see these still have the watermarks from the stock photo sites because I didn't buy them yet. Um, so I just have to replace these with the actual photos, the high resolution photos that I buy from the stock photo sites. I've already got those over here in a folder, so I can just drag and drop this into Photoshop. And what I'll usually do is set a transparency to about 50% so I can see through it. And that way I can try to, it doesn't have to be perfect because my first version was just a really rough mock-up um, and I'll be able to fiddle with this later in the size and stuff. This photo is actually pretty good because it gives me some really dark um, foreground rocks and stuff that just came with the photo. Previously, I think I had tried to build up that foreground with a bunch of other elements. Um, and I may add to it later, but I may also not really need to. So now that I have that, I could actually just go ahead and delete that um, previous one I, I had put in there. I'm also going to turn off 
this title for now just because it's kind of going to get in the way when I'm cleaning up the background. So most of this background is one big stock photo which is down here but then there's also some lighting effects I added to put a lot of glow. So you can see this picture actually fades into really dark stars and if I brought it down underneath the lighting effects then I'd have all this glow here and I could just delete this top line um, but I also have to get this figure to be in front of the glow so I'm going to have to crop him out. Um, but I'll do that in a minute. First I'm just going to replace these background images and clean them up also. There's a lot of places to look for stock images. I tend to use deposit photos the most. Um, the next best one that sometimes has some higher quality choices is Shutterstock. It looks like this picture that I'm looking for actually came from Shutterstock. But I'm going to see if I can find it anywhere else. So I typically go to TinEye. TinEye is a reverse image search. And I can just drag and drop this photo in here and it will show me um, where it shows up on the internet. So now I can see it is actually on Deposit Photos and since I have um, an account with Deposit Photos and a whole bunch of credits, I'm just going to get it from there. With the sizing, um, a normal book cover, an ebook cover, or a 6x9, 300 dpi print book cover is 1800 pixels by 2700 pixels. So I don't actually need one that's this large. Um, this is plenty, small would be a bit too small. Large, even if it's not perfect, um, if you're going you know, up or down a little bit, it's not going to make a big difference, especially for background stuff. So now I have this image in my folder. I'm going to drag and drop into Photoshop also. And then same thing, I kind of have to scale it to the size that I want it. I'm actually going to hide this foreground for a minute while I work on the background. So I've replaced um, the background a little bit. I'll go ahead and delete the original one. This is actually what it looks like clean, um, which is pretty good already. And I might actually drag this down even further to get these dark rocks down lower towards the bottom where I want them. And I want to try to keep the glow kind of in the middle. Um, so this is different than how I had the original, but I think this will work better. And it's going to look a little different once I put this layer back in, um, because you can tell it doesn't, you know, fit. So I'm going to have to blend it all together. But I like how this background looks. And then I also had these two layers, which were basically just light, um, but there's also some movement and some rocks. So I liked how that looked. Normally when blending lights, if you only wanted to keep the light part and not the dark part, I would blend it to something like screen, um, which I could still do, but that almost makes it too white. And I think it's probably fine just to leave this normal. So this original picture uh, looks something like this. And I can basically just turn it around stretch it and scale it and put it wherever I think it's going to look the best. There's actually a little guy in the original artwork, um, but I'm not going to use him. And I'm really just trying to use a little bit of the light and the texture. Um, so I can just take a really big eraser and kind of go around the outside to get rid of the edges and bring up some of my really dark foreground there. And then I actually moved it around a little bit more. Um, this was the original, which looks fine. It has some more dark kind of um, around the edges. Normally I would use like a vignette layer for shadow and I might do that also. Um, but for now I kind of wanted to add that darkness into the edges because that gives it kind of a nice frame effect. It's not blended super well down here um, and I could go clean that up with an eraser later but it's fine for now because I actually have this whole layer also that I need to blend in. Um, but first let me finish up with these rocks. So this is just another layer I think of just following rocks basically um, and I've set it to multiply because a way to get this is what it actually looks like with the white background so the way to get rid of just a white background would be to set it to multiply and it just leaves the dark stuff. 
So I just added the layer here and then I go up to multiply for the blending. And then I'll have to just use an eraser and delete some of these smaller rocks from the middle. That's where my text is going to go, so later I might clean that a little bit. Um, I do have a little spaceship up here too. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that yet, but I might move it around. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave that kind of where it is. So the basic background is pretty clean. Um, one little thing, I do have this color layer here. So the nice thing about color layers is it's really easy. It's just a color fill. Um, I can duplicate it. I can change all the colors if I want to. This is going to look a lot cooler later once the model and everything is there. Um, but then I could also change the blending. So right now it's set to color, but I could also just go down here and change the different blending modes to kind of see how it looks because some of these colors might be um, really nice. The natural color here is actually not bad. Um, I was saying for a sci-fi color, like most sci-fi space books are going to be blue, especially Space Odyssey. Um, but certain kind of books like Mars, for example, depending on the type of sci-fi story, um, a different color might be better. But it's really easy to play with the colors. For now, I'm just going to leave it for blue and I'm going to go back down to this layer, which I have to blend. So this guy is a little bit tricky because it's got a kind of a soft outline um, and it's got these stars and space all around it. If I wanted to, like I could just try to, um, I'll duplicate it so I can show you the, the two ways that I could do this. I could just move it behind this light layer and then I would probably just take an eraser and delete some of this top. Um, and I'd want to go in a little bit more carefully and try to do this right, but um, something like that. Then I could also duplicate this layer and put it on top of the light layer, but then do some kind of a blend. Um, which looks okay, except it makes that robot guy really faded out. It's actually kind of nice because then this little guy stands out a lot more um, because there's a lot more contrast between the light figure behind him. So I might want to keep a little bit of that anyway. Um, so that's one option. When it's this light, I can also see that I think these rocks up here are a bit too dark, um, which is going to mess up the text and the font. It's going to make um, it a little more distracting. So what I might do is just change the um, opacity a little bit so they're not as dark, but I could also do something like adjust mist, bright, brightness contrast and just play around with um, trying to make these rocks not quite as like black. But that's a fine tuning thing I'll probably do later once I'm seeing how the text looks. So the other way to do this, going back to this layer, would just be to crop this guy out. Um, and I'm going to try to use, in Photoshop 2020, there's a new tool, which is the object selection tool, um, which sometimes is really good. So if I just do this, sometimes it does a really good job of picking up the edges. In this case, because there's not really a sharp edge anyway, like I said, it's really kind of blurred and there's not a really strong contrast. Um, that didn't actually work very well. If I hold down on the shift key, then I can go in and keep trying to select little pieces of it. Um, and it kind of gradually starts picking everything up. But probably there are better ways to get a cleaner cutout. Um, the difference would just be you'd have to do it manually. So you'd have to go in with a pen tool and kind of draw a line around the whole thing really carefully. I'm going to see if I can get away with not doing that. So this is actually looking not terrible. Um, I'm just going to go command copy, command paste, which is just going to cut this layer out. 
and then it looks like that. So it is a little bit rough. Um, however, like I mentioned, I kind of liked how it was lighter before. So I can go back and put this background behind it. And then I can play around with just this level. Um, so maybe it doesn't have to be 100% opacity. Maybe it can be 50% or something. Um, I might duplicate that layer and blend it on soft light, which will just make it stand out a little bit more. So that way I can still see it, but it also it's lighter, um, fades in the background a little bit better. This character stands out a lot more. I'm also going to probably focus on getting this character to really jump out by adding some extra glow around him. Um, and at this point, keeping in mind I need to keep room for my title up here, I think I'm going to move the author names down a little bit, make them a little bit smaller because they're kind of getting in the way of the art. So if I have these down here, which is about as low as they can go towards the bottom of the book cover, um, I'm just going to need to move this guy up a little bit. I think I selected all the layers. Just because I want him to really stand out on top of that text. Um, this is going to be a little bit harder because I'm going to have to squeeze in the title up here and you want the title to be balanced without um, cropping over the top of the artwork. I could also make this just a lot, well not a lot smaller, but a little bit smaller and then try to bring it up a little bit, but I run out of the foreground that comes with this picture. Um, and I just kind of like it a little bit bigger, it stands out more. I want to even add a little bit more contrast, so I'm going to duplicate maybe one of these layers. Um, and then see multiply, color burn, which one stands out the most without it getting um, tacky. If you have too much contrast, um, there's something to be said for kind of the soft blending. It can look more professional, so if it's just like too much contrast and it looks manipulated, um, it won't work quite as well. I'm also noticing this rock over here kind of gets in the way of the art, um, so I might go back down and find wherever that layer was and then just try to um, move it closer to the edge so that there's more space in there. And like I said, that's not really, you know, blended super great. But it mostly works. And then I try to put the light point behind him, which really makes him stand out a lot more also. So that's kind of nice. There's a couple things going on here with like the double rocks. So I'd have to go up to my rocks layer and if I see that like some rocks are interfering with other pieces of art um, I might want to delete selectively just one of those pieces. So this is looking pretty good. Um, it's kind of hard to see if this guy is in the center. I try to make this guy in the center but it looks like because his arms are pointed out in different ways you know, the distance isn't going to be quite even, so it's more important to have this guy um, right in the center. That's where I would try to focus my eye when I'm centering it. So I might need to go over here a little bit. And then I did say I might want that guy to jump out a little more, so I could do the options object selection tool again um, just for him. And even if I don't get it, perfect, then I could go to layer, layer style, outer glow. Um, so you can see already that made a really big difference in getting that guy to stand out just by selecting that one guy and adding a glow around him. This is where I might want to start cleaning things up a little bit. Um, I probably should have done it before I like duplicated this layer several times because now I'd have to do it a bunch of times. Um, however, I should be able to merge these layers without causing too much of a difference. And now there's just one layer to clean up. I still have the background layer there, but it's so faint you really can't see 
um, the details. So what I'd have to do here is go in with my pen tool. Um, and there's different ways of using the tool, but you kind of just have to um, go all the way around it, select the parts you want. You can um, connect two points and then bend it to make curved lines. So it's pedantic and takes a while. And I would probably just do a little bit of a section and then come back and close this loop. Define custom shape or make selection. And then I could just erase um, what I've selected on the outside. He's already kind of a robot with some different paneling going on, so I think it's okay if it's not perfect, but like, for example, this head should be pretty smooth. So I've basically just gone and cleaned up around the edges a little bit. So at this point, let's, I've gone around and cleaned up the edges a little bit. Um, I want to see what would happen if we put another character in here. Um, this one already looks really good. This actually could be male or female. Um, it's got a nice lighting around it and it's got this nice shadow on the ground. So there'd be a lot of different things to fix if we wanted to replace it. And um, I actually found some really cool 3D renders on Deposit Photo that I want to try out just for fun. So by 3D renders, I mean things like this. Um, it used to be the case that it was really difficult to find this kind of art for book covers, but now you can get really high quality 3D renders in almost any pose. So what I would normally have to do is buy a whole bunch of different photos and then try to Frankenstein them all together to get the poses and the faces and the outfits or whatever. Plus you can't really, like you can't just find a picture of a cool sci-fi spacesuit because there aren't, you know, they don't actually exist. So unless you have a top-notch illustrator and even then it's hard to find the right images to make really high quality book cover art. Um, until recently. Now on Deposit Photos, there are a lot of people who are actually making custom renders. I just bought some today of like um, 3D fairies with the fairy wings and a really cool um, fantasy armor. But they're also available on some stock photo sites. So let me just pull out some of the ones I think are cool. Um, here's one for example. It's a little weird, but let me drag it in here so that you see kind of how it could look. I'll make it maybe a little bit bigger than this one. And because this is just on a white background, the object tool should actually work pretty well. Um, which is nice. It looks like it didn't quite get all of this because that white just kind of blends in with the background. It might work a little better. Anyway, it's not totally perfect yet, but um, pretty good. And then I would have to delete this background guy or hide him a little bit. So that's a little more tricky. Um, let me see what I can do. I'm first going to duplicate that layer just so I have something extra to work with. There are tools to delete something um, completely, but it would take a while. And right now I'm just kind of playing around. So I'm actually just going to take a paintbrush tool and brush in some light. So that's not perfect, but it's going to work for right now. I could go back and show you how this um, character would fit in. So it's still going to be um, pretty small. This way I can get, just kind of see how it might look if I wanted to do something like this. Generally, you have one central figure. This one's a little weird because they have this giant robot and a central figure. Um, typically, the bigger of the story, if it's space opera or, or epic fantasy, if it's a big um, e epic complicated plot, then you would want a smaller character. So the smaller character and the bigger landscape. And if it was something that's more character specific, like for example, urban fantasy, um, where the K 
characters and the emotions are more important than the story, then you would want to have your main character um, a lot bigger. Anyway, so that's just one option. This is a female. I mean, they're outside in space, so whoever's here kind of has to have some kind of a spacesuit or a helmet. Um, but this is a pretty modern, obviously female helmet. And it's pretty typical to at least like if you if you have conflict, if, if it's a space odyssey, um, there's people are going to expect some shooting, some some weaponry, some guns. Um, so if it's more action based, it's pretty common to have a weapon, even if maybe your character doesn't really use a gun. A gun is just kind of a way to show that there is conflict um, and fighting and shootouts and battles or whatever, um, even if it's not really fitting for the story and the plot. Um, however, Jim told me that this character is more of um, a sci-fi scientist or president figure, more like a political leader than a soldier. So this militaristic um, uniform might really not fit. I'm actually going to take this blue layer and drag it behind a little bit. Um, which doesn't work so well for her, but um, for the next one I want to try. I did mention you want to go as badass as possible. Um, so I found these images, which I thought were pretty wild. And this may not at all fit this particular book, um, but she's definitely very cool. So I would use her um, on something soon. And she could even be flying a little bit, which would be awesome. The other way to remove background that might work better here than the object selection tool is a magic wand tool where I'll just click once and then I could hit shift and try to pick. See, it's not going to work so well um, in here, but if I'm careful with it and I do it slowly, I could get all the little pieces. So she's not actually perfect, um, but you can see how it might look. I don't think she stands out as well as that other guy did. Um, and she's maybe too detailed to really show off all of her um, assets and features. She has a lot of really cool detail in her suit that don't really stand out because all you can really see is a, a small silhouette. Um, so even if I made her kind of darker, I don't know, it's not terrible, but I also feel like with all the rocks and stuff, it just, it might be just too much. So I have some other simpler characters that might work. Just as an example, here's some other stuff I found on Deposit Photos, which is new um, and totally awesome. I'm sure I'll use these soon. She doesn't actually look like she would fit outdoors. Um, there's a little bit of suspension of reality. So like you could probably get away with putting her in space, even if it you know doesn't make total sense. But she would definitely fit a lot better like inside of a space uh, ship hatch or something and there's some really good backgrounds where I could put her. Um, but here's another one that's interesting. It definitely looks like a droid or an android. Um, it's an androgynous. I can't really tell if it's a girl or guy so it could work as a spacesuit um, even if it's not quite as feminine as it could be. But I also don't really think it's a huge um, it's not a huge improvement over the original figure who was already kind of cool. And this one might be a little too robotic since we already have this other robotic. Um, so let me try another one that's more simple. Here's another one I found that's also maybe a little too masculine. You can almost see that he's got a kind of masculine face. Um, but I really like his kind of body language. I just think he's got a really tough um, kind of assertive body posture going on. So I think that might be interesting. And then I also have a couple that are female um, and they have some really reflective body armor which is kind of cool. Um, and the only problem is that there's no feet on this picture but I could probably just combine a couple. Even this guy's boots almost fit um, if I played around with it enough. So if I was just looking for kind of a female spacesuit, um, I'd probably go with this one. She has really dark 
um, contrast on her suit, which makes her really stand out. I'd probably almost darken some of this middle stuff because that kind of takes away the silhouette. But I like the metal reflection going on in her legs. I just have to add some some boots down here. Um, but she looks really good. To get her to stand out even more, I would probably um, get rid of this guy or just make him a little bit lighter so that she really pops um, from the background. There's some other really cool stuff I found. For example, this like ninja robot. Um, this is, I mean, this is amazing for a 3D render that's that you couldn't have been able to find and use for a book cover um, a year or two ago and now you can just find it on a stock photo site. That's pretty exciting. Especially because the nice thing about renders is it's pretty easy to get three or four different poses. Um, if you just find them on, on Shutterstock or Deposit Photos, you don't really have any options in regards to poses. But if you use um, DAS 3D software or you have someone who's offering renders to the cover design marketplace, there's a bunch of people um, who are doing that now, you could either request certain poses or you buy like a pack of 10 different poses, which makes it uh, really easy to do sequels or trilogies. Here's some other stuff that I thought looked really interesting. This is more for like uh, fantasy, but it could be space fantasy. I think one of these dark ones or the silver could look pretty good. Um, if I wanted to fix the outdoor problem, I could just add some kind of a electronic mask to cover up her face. And then in terms of silhouettes, I also saw um, this couple, which was interesting. And this probably won't work because this is really just a 3D um, illustration. But I'm going to play with it anyway, just because she's got a really um, nice pose. So if I get rid of those guys. And I do my object selection. She would look kind of like that. I could paste the layer style to give her more glow. Um, and the only problem here is that she's holding her helmet and not wearing it, which is unrealistic because she's standing outside in space. Um, and also, like I mentioned, this is a flat 2D image um, and this is a 3D background. But actually, like you can't really tell with the small details. Um, I would probably add some contrast even. Anyway, it's a, it's a kind of a nice pose. Um, it looks like she's really assertive, about to go to war with this guy, so it's kind of interesting, but I think the helmet's probably a problem. I also found this one, which would be really good for a space um, marine. Same problem with the face not being covered, and it's not quite um, space sci-fi. Here's another one that's really cool. Um, the other thing I could do if I just want to take a really nice um, spacesuit body would be to use her and just put another helmet on. Um, for example, let me try to find it. This one already has kind of a nice helmet. So for example, if I want to do this real quick, I could scale her down to about the right size. I'd probably try to line up the hands or the arms because that's one of the easiest ways. Um, and she does have a gun which is not really a space gun. Um, and also this character for this book, it may not be appropriate. Um, but she does have some really nice lighting. So I just wanted to show you what that could look like and sometimes how you need to um, cut and paste different parts of different pictures together to get you know the best combination it, it's also nice because if you're just using stock photos it's inevitable that somebody else is going to have the same exact character which isn't actually a big deal um, but if you do do a little bit of mix and matching it's more likely your character will be um, unique so if I wanted to do something like that um, I'm going to duplicate this girl and then I'll add a glow behind this one. And then I'd have to just go and kind of delete this background layer. 
everything except um, the helmet. The inter interesting thing with this helmet is I could almost just leave it like that behind her and it makes it look like she's actually wearing um, a helmet without covering up her face all the way. But if I did want to just replace the, the face thing, I could just put that up on top, um, which looks kind of weird. And then I could even go in here and try to delete the face panel. Um, and I'd have to scale it and size it so it was more realistic. And it looks like I might have to, because the angle is wrong, I'd probably have to go in and replace that face altogether um, with a different face. Or I could just try to fill in that panel um, altogether with, you know, something else. But it does um, look pretty good, at least in terms of like the light and the contrast and the lighting. Um, this figure looks really strong and is obviously feminine. Um, I could get rid of the gun and add something more appropriate, but I don't know. I, I mean. That's kind of a personal preference and also, um, like I said, the gun just kind of hints towards conflict and violence. Um, so even if it's like it might attract more people by having a gun um, because it has a promise of an exciting story, but only if it's actually, you know, an action um, type of sci-fi book. If it's more speculative um, sci-fi that's deep and brooding and there's not a lot of actual action, then it makes sense not to have a pistol there. Um, so real quick, I'm going to show two more options and then we'll move on to text. Um, this is kind of like, I'll, I'll often make just a whole bunch of variations so that we can find the right model. Um, so here's one interesting one. There's a lot of good reflection, a lot of good detail. And here her stance is a little more comedic, I think. Um, so it would hint towards maybe a, you know, more personality writing, maybe more uh, funny. And then the other one was um, this one, which is a little bit of a pose. And I may need to um, replace her helmet depending on the character that I'm trying to match or her face or whatever. Um, but her posture has some attitude. Um, so that could work. Also, her legs are really thick. I'm not really sure why. I might make her a little bit smaller. And again, like all you're really going to see in a thumbnail view, um, you're going to see the whole impact of the cover. So like this little figure you're not really going to see all the little details. But we have a lot of options now, so that's great. Um, I'm going to move on to the title text. So I'm going to start with the layer that I had before, um, which looks like this. And you can see that I'm already having trouble here. So one of the things that I could actually do is put it behind some of my other layers and even behind this robot a little bit. Um, so I could make it so that, you know, the robot head covers up a little bit of the text, um, which might look okay. But for now, I'm just going to remove some of the space. Um, which you can't really see, but under my character panel over here, I'm just changing the spacing between the lines. And if I put it up here, that's almost too... Um, too high. Ideally, my title would be about here. So it does, you know, it's hard to kind of fit everything where it needs to go. And if you wanted to be really clever about it, um, this wouldn't normally work in most cases, but I just had a clever idea. So I want to kind of talk you through it. So if I was thinking about putting this down lower, I could almost put one of these letters on his forehead. Um, so let me see how this could potentially work if I had rock really big. 
So I'm already pretty sure that this isn't going to work, but what I was thinking is I could take the AI in rain um, and just put it on his forehead somehow. It's like a brand. Something like that. Um, which is almost awesome because then I'm using the AI for artificial intelligence inside of um, the rain. I could even try to change the fonts a little bit to make that work or make it more obvious and I mean even though it's really clever it's also probably just a little bit too distracting and confusing um, and needlessly complicated so you want to be careful not to get carried away with trying to make a clever idea work um, it's almost always just to have a really strong simple cover um, if I did want to make this work, to make it work, the text is too small. So I would have to make this guy much, much bigger um, to make the rain work. I may have that as a variation because it could come off really well. Um, it already doesn't look that terrible. But it's also probably a case of being needlessly complex. Um, I'm going to put in one of my characters back again just so that there's something. I think this is the original one. Um, the original one's pretty strong, so that may, you know, in the end be the strongest option. You really only want uh, two fonts, so one simple serif or sans serif font for your subtext and title text, um, and one a little bit more fancy, but not too fancy, genre font that's really clear and obvious for your genre. Um, and I think, like I said earlier, I picked this really thick, big font because the words are shorter. If I had, you know, a really long title, I would want to use a really tall, narrow font like this one just to fit all the letters in. Um, and I would also want to have as much spacing as possible because this is sci-fi. Um, it's better to have, like, the more space you have between the elements, the more cinema cinematographic it would be um, even something like this it just looks more like a movie poster to have like lots of space so when you can get away with it that's better um, if it's really like the fast if it's fast-paced action you want a little bit bolder text that are larger if it's a little bit more suspense and intrigue then you want smaller fonts that are more spread out um, but anyway for now just in case I'm gonna look for some other fonts that might be good alternatives. You can actually even just Google sci-fi font um, to see what shows up and there's a lot of font sites that just have you know different fonts by genre. Um, you do need to check which site you're on and what the license looks like to make sure you can use it for commercial use. Um, a lot of this, especially on defont.com, a lot of it's free but then you really have to check um, the license to see what you're allowed to do with it. But it's a good way to find um, at least ideas for the right type of font. You also don't want to get too fancy. Some of this stuff is like might look really cool but wouldn't actually make a great book cover just because it's a little hard to read or too fancy. So I found some alternative fonts to play with. Um, you don't want too many choices, and a lot of what I've chosen are pretty similar. So it's kind of a balance between what looks the best, um, what's the coolest, or most stylistic. I think the one that I like the most is this one, which is a little bit non-standard, a little bit harder to read, um, but also looks a lot cooler, so I think I might try it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this second part down here. I would prefer if it was all in the same um, font. The The title should really all be in the same font, but I'm also still curious about playing with this AI rain thing and seeing if I could get that to work. Um, but even if I keep this title here, there's a couple things we need to do, like we need to move these rocks a little bit. And I, I said I wanted to kind of have them faded out so they don't, don't get in, you know, they don't block out quite as much. 
and I don't want them to be like behind the title because then it'll get harder to read. Um, but I also want, you know, the sky to be full of rocks. It'd be better if these rocks looked a little more like these rocks, so a little more blue. And I could probably do that by moving it behind the color layer a little bit. Um, I could also duplicate this color layer and then do something like uh, overlay, which would kind of sharpen everything. But that, like, even though it makes it look a little more like one scene, and even though it, you know, makes these rocks look a little more like these rocks, it also just removes a lot of the, um, the nice contrast in the scene. So I'm not sure if I'm actually going to do that. And I might even just bring these back so that they're a little bit darker, as long as they're not directly blocking the title. The other thing I played with um, originally was trying to, I like to do letter substitution. So for example, if I could find a really nice spaceship that's O-shaped um, and just fit it in there and delete the O and have a spaceship there instead, um, that could look cool. It's going to be way too much if I try to do that and the AI thing. That's just going to be overboard, but sometimes you can get away with and even here, like there's just too much going on to have the spaceship right here also. So it's not going to work. But sometimes if you can think of a way to do um, a, a letter substitution and put an object there, it can work really well, but it could also be needlessly distracting. So for now, I switched this title to this other font, um, which is a little simpler and cleaner. It's not the other one that I said was my um, favorite, but if I was going to try to fit, you know, one title somewhere, it this would probably be the best font to fit those two words. Um, I'm going to remove this spaceship for now. I'm not really sure where it should go. Um, possibly something like down there to the side. Um, I might replace it or add different kinds of spaceships later on. Um, I'm going to put it behind the blue though so it blends in a little better. Um, I could also try to like overlap and put it over the text, which gives it a little bit more 3D. Um, but again, I really want to make the title clear. And it's a little bit off balance already. Like this looks okay, but it's a little off balanced. Um, I'd really want this title, you know, to come down to about here if I could, but I can't block that art. Um, and so in a cover like this, if it did have two words, I might be tempted to change the color a little bit on one of them just for kind of variation. Um, but actually what we're going to do next is look at different kinds of text effects to make it stand out. So what you would be tempted to do, um, what a lot of immature cover designers do to make the text stand out. Let me try to find it. So this one, um, the easy thing would be to, for example, add an outer glow, which I've already done a little bit. Um, but I could make that, you know, a lot stronger. Um, here's my layer styles panel. I could also add um, a gradient. You basically have to decide if your text is going to be light or dark. So if this is a really light background, um, and I would probably even lighten this top more so that this text really stands out. Um, I'll probably do that later with a gradient layer. Um, but you kind of have to decide if it's going to be white text on a dark background or dark text on a light background and then plan and adjust accordingly with either um, an outer glow feature or a drop shadow. And you don't want to make either one um, too brutal and too obvious. And you could also do something like a stroke, which is just basically a line um, that could go inside or outside the text. So if I just wanted to like super stand out, I could put a little bit of a, a line around it, um, which I wouldn't really do because that makes it look a little flat. It does help it to stand out a lot and it doesn't look terrible in this particular case for this cover because it's sci-fi, um, but I don't think it would work in a lot of cases. Um, for now, I'm going to leave it and I'll duplicate this layer. But what we really would want to do in Photoshop, rather than playing around with those manually, 
is just to go into our style portfolio. So under styles, I already have a bunch of these um, that I've gotten from various places online, mostly Graphic River, I think is what I use for styles. And so if I could click on this text layer and choose one of these styles, it would automatically apply a bunch of text effects for me. Um, and that one actually looks really cool. So that's possibly already my favorite. Um, and you'll notice that it doesn't really stand out as well um, as the one that was just, just kind of like really dark. Um, on the other hand, the colors and the lighting all really look good on this particular background. Um, I don't usually love 3D text that stands out like this, but in this case, I think it works really well. I think I need to find those rocks and put them behind the text. Um, and then I'll probably have to go back and delete some things, remove some things around. They could just go up a little bit higher too, or I could bring them kind of down on the sides a little deeper, but not so much on the top. So even though I really like this style, I'm going to use the other word, rain, to test out a few different things just to see if I find anything um, that works better. So here's one, for example, that also looks really good, um, but it's different. I could also go in here and play with specific um, effects. Um, for example, like I was saying about 3D text, I think the flat text actually looks a lot more professional and is easier to read, especially every once in a while you have to kind of zoom out. Um, and the problem with a lot of text effects is it'll make the words harder to read. So like rain is a lot easier to read there as a thumbnail than it would be if I added um, the bevel. And then like you might want to use the same um, font effect for each word rather than the variation here. But I could go through and just unselect a bunch of these and just see which version looks the best. If I could maybe get rid of, um, for example, this one that's darker, has more contrast, that might actually work better. Although I think you can also kind of see what's going on. Like there's the background here is wider, so you need the darker text because it's going to contrast more with the light. Um, and then up here, a little bit higher, there's more darkness. So the light white text stands out. Um, and it's a little bit weird to try to jump from, like you're basically reversing your, your darks and lights, you know, within about an inch on your cover. That's really tricky to do. Um, but right here, it almost kind of works because there is some transition happening. If I do want to think about saving, what I'll usually do is just go to duplicate the layer. Um, that way I can keep experimenting with other styles, but still go back and get to that original style. What usually happens is when you play too much, um, you might save something that looks really good, but then, you know, a dozen or two changes later, you can't go back exactly, especially when you're playing with the opacity or the different layers and settings. Um, here's one that looks interesting but there's some stuff that's weird about it. I think it's a 3D bevel. So if I go and try to um, play with the layers a little, like that drop shadow doesn't really work. Um, the outer glow is fine. Pattern is kind of interesting. So you kind of just have to click on things one by one. So probably it's that stroke that's bothering me and maybe the bevel and the emboss. Um, and again, like I said, I prefer kind of flat fonts like that. I just think they they look more professional, but sometimes you can get away with um, a little bit of bevel if it's done well. So the only other thing I did was um, grab these two layers and just stretch them out a bit. You want to be careful with stretching your uh, fonts because it can look really obvious if you just what I did is basically edit free transform um, and then you can just kind of move it how you want. But if your 
fonts look stretched, it's just not going to look very good, so you don't want to do it um, very much. In this case, this font was already a little bit too um, horizontal, so it, it wasn't a problem to stretch it a little bit um, down like that, just to fill some more space. And so this isn't um, perfect yet. I could still be doing some cleaning, but it's also pretty good. I think the author name maybe is a little bit unbalanced. Um, I might try to use a different kind of font down there that doesn't take up so much space. Um, so for example, this looks a little bit crowded, but it's also just simpler and cleaner. Um, depends on, you know, it's a little harder having the two author names. If I had one author name, I would probably make the fonts a little bigger. Um, it's a little harder to fit all the text and make it look balanced. Um, but this way it takes up less space. So this was the original, which takes up a lot more space and looks more sci-fi. Um, but it's also a little bit harder to read. I probably prefer this version anyway. I typically like to have my author name almost as wide as my title text, um, but this is about right. And so you could also see at this point if I took away that blue um, background or if I added in the orange instead, it can add a pretty big difference to the mood or the feeling. Um, so then we're just getting into, you know, blending layers and final edits and stuff. So at this point, I mean, we're, I've basically made all the choices. Um, and so I would start saving actual mockups. I just go to fi uh, file, export, save for web. Um, I typically save mockups at about 600 pixels, at least the width. Um, and I would do this because it's hard to compare. It looks like something's weird is going on with that R up there. I'm not really sure. I might have to fix that. Um, it's hard to compare just looking at the Photoshop and flicking back between, you know, all the characters and all the titles and stuff. So if I really save five or ten different covers showing the different variations, the different fonts or text effects or characters, then it's a lot easier for us to make decisions about okay, we want the person from number two and the title text from number four or whatever. Um, and then it's just a matter of, you know, finishing up those final elements, um, maybe doing a little bit more cleaning with the lights and the contrast. I could also do something really easy like um, adjustments. And with the adjustments layer, um, let me go up here actually. So I could go hue, saturation, color balance, brightness, contrast, um, and then just kind of play with things. Color balance is kind of fun. It won't, this is monochrome, it's monochromatic, so like color balance isn't going to make that big of a difference. Um, but for example, if I take away this blue and we have actual colors, then when I do color balance, um, you can really make some specific changes to how things are going to look. And even going, you know, full, totally different colors. You could also, um, you want to be careful about too many colors. You want a cover to have like one or two colors. And ideally, you want them to be contrasting colors. So you could also... I mean, it gets a little bit complicated, but you could also, for example, I could just try to put a color layer over this bottom part and make it blue, and then I could keep the sky teal or yellow or orange. Um, or I could even focus on specific elements. So if I wanted almost everything to be blue, but then I wanted, you know, the guy to really stand out. Um, I could take one of my little guy figures and bring him up to the top. He's a, he's a dark silhouette, so it's really not going to work to have him stand out that much. 
Um, I don't know that this is really going to work, but if I do a color overlay and I don't know, I'll put them in red. The red's also just not really going to contrast with the blue as much as some other colors. And it wouldn't really fit in well with the blue background because the lighting is different. Um, but anyway, my point, you could also like, for example, I could just make his the robot's eyes red or, you know, certain little elements of the cover could be in a different color. That's all I'm kind of trying to say. Uh, I'm going to stop this video here. I think we've gone through a lot of things and you've kind of seen how it all fits together. Now we're just going to start to make some final choices about which of the elements we want to keep. Uh, thanks. I hope it was really helpful. Bye-bye.